What's going on there, YouTube? It's been a while. I've been a little busy lately. I've had a bunch of stuff going on at home, and I haven't been very active on social media or really on the channel. Um, lots of big things coming. Not really necessarily RC related, but uh, every now and then you got to stop and do your adulting, and then you get back to it. So today's video is just going to be quick unboxing. I posted something a few weeks ago on Facebook after I got my RC four wheel drive ARB rooftop tent that I was looking for one of their trailers and nobody had any they were selling. I really wanted the RC four wheel drive trailer. Um, I've wanted one forever and they just aren't available. So they're still on their website but they've been out of stock for quite a while and uh, yeah so I got to doing some digging. I found on uh, Big Squid RC that Entigy makes the same trailer and uh, everywhere I found it for sale uh, even the link in the video description here to Amazon. Um, I did start also another thing I've been working on. I've got an Amazon Associates Influencer page that I'm going to post up stuff that I really like. So in the video description there's a link to the Amazon page and it's not the best price out there on this. So take that into consideration. They have this MSRP at $279 but if you buy it directly from Entity's website it's about 150 something the shipping it's the same price as RC four wheel drives was so that being said um, I, you can check out the influencer page just little odds and ends I'm trying to piece it together with stuff as I get it so it'll just be things that I personally like it's not gonna be anything that John I'm not peddling crap from far away places that's not very high quality it's gonna be things brand name stuff that I have that I like that I use if I get something that I don't like you know I've done videos like that before I've gotten scale items and they suck and I tell you it sucks and I'm not gonna recommend you buy it but it'll be a place in the future where things that I do like like this trailer are going to be posted so anyway let's get this thing opened up um, I know a lot of people either really love or really hate NTG stuff I have not had any bad experiences with things. I Most of the problems I heard were people buying aftermarket uh, control arms and things like that for slashes and all that. And uh, yeah, that stuff, I can see where the, the type of aluminum they use would be brittle. But for scale items, I don't think it's really going to be a big deal because scale items aren't getting the level of abuse your T-Max or Emax or Revo or whatever current basher truck is out there on the market so uh, I think it's gonna be just fine and I'm excited I'm really into this overlanding stuff that's one other one of the things I've got going on right now is I am in the process of changing vehicles in real life and uh, yeah there might be a Toyota 4Runner in my near future all right, so starting up front here, our little front storage box, like a lot of real uh, overlanding trailers, holds your battery and your charging and all your electronic systems. And this is the same. We've got our on-off switch on top. We've got a 9-volt battery. I found one, luckily. Hey, oh, lights are already on. I can get it to plug in here. I wonder when 9-volt batteries will go out of style. Seems like they've been around forever. There we go. We'll shove that down in there. This list snaps in place. There's a little lip on the side to. Uh... Well. Now, one thing the RC four wheel drive model did, it did come with scale tools mounted on the rack already. This does not have that. Let's see if it goes better that way. It's a little it's too snugly down in there, but all the wires. Same problem I had with my car trailer. Trying to get all the wires back in the battery box. It's kind of a pain. There it is. All right, so we've got front side markers on the fender, and then tail lights on the back of the fender. That's really it. Um, one thing the front side markers there on the trailer are they're almost neon green the, luckily the LED bulb itself is amber or yellow through the green can't tell it's kind of 
silly, but <laughs> whatever. I'll leave it off to save the battery because I don't know if I have any more. But like we said, it's got diamond plating up here on the top on the tongue, and we've got hooks, not hooks, but places here to put tools through and crank them down so they don't fall out. And I guess I can't turn that by hand. Wow. It's got. I gotta see if that comes loose. It's kind of weird. Okay, so you gotta loosen them up first with the uh, tool. So we'll have to look around through our tools here and see what we got. Down here we've got a hitch with a ball in it. Does not rotate all the way around, so it's not going to give us a whole lot of articulation. I'm trying to figure out what I got to do to let it now oh, there it goes so it should drop the ball out you got a clip on the end huh have to do some more research on that here and we've got our functional jack feels pretty smooth and it's going down pretty pretty smoothly a lot of overland trailers don't have that kind of jack in real life it's just kind of in the way hang up on rocks and stuff on some of the trails but it is what it is we're in the scale world all right around this side we've got the same thing we've got a diamond plate step front and back we've got nice feeling door latches all aluminum everything uh feels pretty good with that except oh i see it pulls and then locks and basically this top part is the same as the tent the RC four wheel drive tent so you can see it's got almost the same layout the same hinges um, it's pretty much the same thing it has a lot thinner material and just like the RC four wheel drive trailer had and I think that'll actually be beneficial the ARB one is so thick it, the cover is the only issue with it really the uh, cover for driving it's just so thick and hard to pull down over it this is super, super easy to thin. The elastic is a lot more, a lot more giving as well. <laughs> so let's flip around back. Hey, you can see a little bit better look at this kind of gold bronze color this is. Kind of an odd color choice. It's kind of two-toned. The, the rack and the fenders are kind of a dark grayish look, and the rest of it's kind of a gold bronze. But we've got a spare tire, full spare. I'm guessing these are beadlock because they are a two-piece wheel. You can see through it. And... We've got some kind, ah, there we go, actual locking swing out tire carrier. It's pretty cool. Not sure how this part opens. We've got one little tab right here. I think that's just to uh, hold the tailgate in place. Got mesh in there. You can see in there a little bit, but I don't know what we're, if that even opens. I don't feel like that does anything. Huh. Maybe we can get around there from the other side. So this you twist. Nope. <laughs> Down, over, and then it's locked in. Now the last side, same thing. We got to pull out a little bit. Open the latch. Just the wires inside. So it's just open all the way through. So I'm not sure how you would use that space. Typically that would be accessed from underneath the tent. But I'm guessing the tent does not open up like that. Most of these, like I said, the, the whole base here, the tent and everything would lift up and you'd have access to the bottom like a normal trailer. But I guess that just wasn't feasible with their design. So, let's look at the tent. We start pulling the cover off, which pulls off very easy. There's our bag of... We'll pull our ladder down. We've got our bag of... Uh, what do you call those spring things? I don't know. <laughs> That's what you pull out your your awnings and stuff with. I guess it opens up to this side. Here's our hinge. Grab it, pull the ladder. Bada boom, bada bing. So it is almost identical to the other tent. Just a thinner, more tent-like material. It's got all the same openings. I like how they left this on there. <laughs> That's your uh, rain guard. You can roll that up. Look at inside, it's the same. It's got three bows. 
It actually folds out very nicely with the thinner material. I like that. Uh, let me get some different angles. All right, guys. So I got it mostly set up, and I've got it here on my Trail Finder 2. Um, the hitch actually works pretty well. It's a nice, quick release. So if you're needing to drive it and you got this hooked up, it doesn't have to require tools to remove. You just simply grab the spring-loaded thing here, push it all the way in, and it lifts right off. Um, also, the weight balance on it is fantastic, so it's not really putting any tongue weight on the back of the Trail Finder. This one already sits pretty low. You can see we still have full amount of up travel with it. It's very, uh, very light tongue weight. Uh, this will probably slow us down a little bit. There's no, again, there's no way to really fold that up out of the way. But uh, this goes together so much easier than the other one because the material of the tent itself is so thin. Um, I've got, I didn't do this side for the uh, side window, but I've got them up on the other side. And uh, yeah, works pretty good. I like the, uh, the thinner material, like I said, that's, that's pretty cool. Um, so definitely not worth 270 whatever dollars they, they say. 170, that's about what it, I spent on it shipped, direct from Entergy. It's all right. I don't know. It's, you know, it's one of those things that really serves not a whole lot of purpose other than just the scale factor. It's kind of cool. Turn the lights on. <laughs> it's just one of those silly little things, but uh, I like it. I like this stuff a lot. And uh, I'm hoping to do some new things like RC overlanding, have these things set up and, and do some trails and stuff with it. Take the Forerunner and the Mojave body and go out and set up a uh, Set up some tents. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this thing's, it, again, it folds up really easy. Um, I'll show you that here real quick. Too long it's still a little bit of a battle to get the cover on get it pulled down on all four sides because it does want to slip in between the two halves of the tent because it is exactly the right fit but you know <laughs> it is what it is but uh again i like it not sure i'm looking at how it comes apart there's a lot of little intricate parts with the latches and things that would make painting it kind of a pain in the butt but i definitely think we need to change the color of it Need to uh, look at some real trailers like Turtlebacks and stuff like that and see what, what kind of combos and stuff they got. But, uh, yeah, I think it's pretty neat. Let me find some uh, scale tools here and we'll try to shove them in that front mount. Yeah, it works. That's an old plastic Proline accessory. I don't even know what kind of tool that is, actually. <laughs> it fits in there and you just hand tighten it back down. I snugged it up with the nut in the middle, just a hair, without trying to damage the handle. But, uh, yeah, overall, I'm not disappointed with it. It's about what I expected. It would be like the RC four-wheel drive, but just slightly different. And, uh, you know, a couple little things. I did pull on the uh, leaf spring a little bit, trying to re-arch it. And I uh, got the tire a little more centered. I like these little tires. They're, they're not like uh, RC four-wheel drive tires I've seen. They're the same size as, I think, the... Which ones are they? As the Dirt Grabbers 155s. But a little bit different tread, about the same uh, consistency, pretty cool. But uh, let me know what y'all think I should do with this thing. You think I should paint it up? You think uh, we should do something about them stark white wheels? Not sure where to take it. But uh, I'm hoping here in the next couple weeks, it's been so hot, we finally got our 100 degree days here, and uh, it's just too hot in the shop to be out here filming, so I've been struggling trying to, to come up with videos I can do that don't involve profusely sweating, but <laughs> just going to take a little break here in the summer, I guess, and recollect my thoughts and figure out what direction we're going. Because I do have a couple builds in the works, like the uh, 
mud truck back there still needs some love. I haven't really made any progress on it. And um, I've got an idea for another rat rod build. I'm not sure if that's going to happen or not yet or how it's going to turn out. And I still have to get prepared for USTE 20 where I'm going to host a class on uh, patina. I've got to try to find a cool common item that we can paint and weather in the class that I can get pretty cheaply. So I've got a lot of stuff going on. Like I said, personal life finances, I'm refinancing the house, I'm doing a bunch of adulting lately so I haven't had time for the for the channel and uh, but hopefully now that's all moving forward and I can get back out in the shop and have some more fun. But let me know in the comments what you think of this thing and what you would do with it because I'm looking for some ideas as far as paint and scale accessories to go on it. And I appreciate y'all watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share, and keep it scale. I'll see y'all in the next video.